Hi guys, welcome back to The Wargamer, and in this video I'm going to be painting one of the most iconic foot soldiers of the whole Star Wars franchise, and that is of course the lowly Stormtrooper. Now you may be thinking that I've already tackled these guys, and you'll be correct, I painted one up uh, from the Star Wars Imperial Assault box set, but this time I'm going to be approaching it in a slightly different way, and I'll be using one of the new Star Wars Legion miniatures to do so, and of course I'll be using the Army Painter range of paints as well. Before we start painting, we first of all need to apply a primer so that the later layers of paint adhere to the miniature's surface. As Stormtroopers are predominantly white, it makes sense to prime in white, and for this I've used an airbrush primer, but any white aerosol primer that is suitable for plastic is fine. The first area that we'll be painting will be the black areas of the miniature. These include the black undershirt, E11 blaster and helmet details, and for this we'll be using Necromancer Cloak. As with all the base coats that I'll be painting in this video, you'll want to mix this paint with some water in roughly equal quantities to make the paint easier to work with. With our paint thinned, we now want to carefully paint all of those black areas of the miniature. Don't worry about getting perfect coverage with your first layer as this is why we watered down our paint. After applying your first layer, allow the paint to dry before applying a second over the top. This layering technique will give a much more uniform looking finish without potentially obscuring details by applying the paint too thickly. Now you may have noticed that the Necromancer cloak I'm using is in fact a very dark grey and the reason I'm using this instead of a black paint is to help to create some definition in the surfaces when I come to apply a wash in one of the later steps. The next step in painting our Stormtrooper is to tackle the grey details on the helmet and this time I'll be using a small detail brush and some dungeon grey watered down in the same way as our Necromancer cloak. Don't worry too much if you overspill onto the white armour as we can always clean this up later on. In this next step I'll be continuing with the dungeon grey but this time we'll be using it for a highlight. So as a result when we come to thin down the paint we want to use slightly less water than before. Instead of mixing the paint and water in equal quantities we instead want to use only half as much water as we do paint creating a 2 to 1 ratio of paint to water. Using our dungeon grey we now want to lightly drag the tip of a thin brush along the raised edges of the areas we paint with necromancer cloak. This will create a small grey line of paint along these edges which helps to bring out the small details on this miniature. The thin down mixture should also make this task much easier as you'll find the flow of paint is much smoother than if you had used it straight from the bottle. For this next step, I'll be using some spaceship exterior mixed in the same way as our Dungeon Grey, but instead of applying this as a regular highlight, we're instead going to be applying it as an extreme highlight. To do this, you want to just apply a small dot of paint onto some of the hard corners or upper edges of these areas, which will really help to enhance the detailing that we have on this model. With our base coat and highlights completed, we now want to apply a wash of dark tone ink over these areas. But before we do so, we need to again thin our wash down. This is because applying it straight from the bottle will be much too strong. However, instead of using water this time, I'll be mixing in some of the Army Painter's Quick Shade Mixing Medium, again in equal parts wash to medium. The Quick Shade Mixing Medium works by reducing the amount of pigment in the ink without changing the consistency of the wash. I find that this results in a much smoother and more subtle result than just mixing in water. However, if you don't have access to this medium, you could instead use a distilled water. It won't have quite the same effect, but it still reduce the strength of your wash. Armed with our thin down wash, we now want to apply our dark tone ink across all of the black and grey areas. The wash will flow into all of those recesses and create the effect of shading, which will help to improve the miniature's level of detail. Additionally, it will also slightly darken down our dark grey necromancer cloak, giving our black areas a smooth transition from black in the recesses to grey on the raised edges. This next step will focus on some of the blue markings that we have on the sides of the helmet, and for this we'll be using Viking Blue. To paint these areas, I would recommend watering down the paint in much the same way as the Dungeon Grey highlight, and using a small brush to tackle those thin blue lines. If you are painting a squad leader like I am here, you will need to paint the orange of his shoulder pauldron. For this, we will begin with a base coat of Fire Lizard applied over the whole pauldron. In this next step, instead of just painting a highlight, we are now going to be applying a layer of troll claws over our orange base coat. The intention of this is to form a gradient between this lighter layer and the darker base coat. But before we do that, we need to mix in some war paint mixing medium from the army painter, and we'll be doing this in roughly equal amounts. 
The mixing medium works in the same way as the quick shade medium by reducing the amount of pigment we have in each brush load whilst maintaining the same viscosity of the paint. With our mixture completed, we now want to apply our troll claws, firstly as a line along the center of the pauldron. Then we want to steadily drag this out towards the edges, creating a gradient. This first layer will be very subtle, but by allowing the first layer to dry before repeating the process, will increase the intensity of the lighter orange. This process should be repeated in order to create a smooth transition from light to dark. With our gradient completed, the final step in painting the orange pauldron is to apply a wash of soft toning, which should be mixed with some quick shade mixing medium as before. Now this wash will help to tie in the two colors we've already applied and smooth out that gradient a little more. With all of our Stormtroopers details completed, we can now start to work on the white armor. But before we go any further, we'll be taking a moment to fix any areas we may have spilled over onto the armor using some white paint. So at the moment, our Stormtrooper's armor is looking very bland, but we can fix this with a wash. However, before we do that, we instead want to cover the armor with a gloss varnish. The reasoning behind this is, first of all, when we come to apply our ink, the gloss will allow the wash to more easily pool into the recesses without staining the color of the armor. Secondly, Stormtrooper armor is in fact shiny, so it makes perfect sense for it to have a glossy sheen. The gloss coat can be applied in many different ways. I'm using a regular brush for this along with the Army Painter's gloss varnish. However, you could also use a spray paint or airbrush instead. Just remember that if you do use a spray on gloss, you will need to use a matte varnish on the weapon and undershirt afterwards. Once our gloss coat is dried, we can start to work on mixing our wash. Once again, we'll be using our dark tone ink, but in order to ensure that our wash is as fluid as possible, we are going to be mixing in a little dish soap and water. So first of all, take some dish soap and some water and mix together roughly one drop of soap per 500 mils or 17 ounces of water to create something called wet water. What we're after here are the surfactants that are found in the soap, which help to reduce the surface tension of the water and help the wash to flow into the recesses. Now take your wet water and mix it together with your dark tone ink in roughly equal parts to create our wash. Alternatively, you can use things called flow improvers, but I find that this wet water technique is also a lot cheaper and a lot easier to do with just things you have lying around the home. With our wet water and dark tone ink mix, we now want to apply it to our armor, but instead of washing the whole of the armor, we are instead going to be applying a pin wash, which is short for pinpoint. To pin wash, you will need a fine brush loaded with our ink mix, and we'll be painting the wash directly into those recesses. The combination of our wash mix and the gloss coat should ensure that our armor's details are picked out, but the main surfaces of the armor remain bright white. And here we have the completed Stormtrooper. You can see I finished off by painting the base as well as applying some foliage. Whilst I focused on painting a Stormtrooper in this video, you could apply the exact colors and techniques that I've used in this tutorial to the speeder bike pilots also found in Star Wars Legion as well. And finally, you can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this video in the description below. And so that concludes this video on painting the Stormtrooper from Star Wars Legion. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below. And also, make sure you uh, subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. If you're a Patreon subscriber, I just want to say a big thank you for supporting these videos because it's your support that really helped these videos to be made. And if you're interested in supporting me as well, you can find out more information in the link in the description below. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.